Hey folks, it's James, and I'm always talking about how Procreate can save you time and take your hand design and rendering skills to the next level. And in today's lesson, I'm going to show you how those two things came together for me in the design of a landscaped rooftop terrace overlooking New York City. So get out your iPads, download the original Procreate file in this video so you can watch along with video replay, and get ready to learn how I saved time while I designed and rendered this project at the same time using Procreate. My client wanted a sketch of a roof terrace that hadn't been designed yet to include in a proposal he was making to the co-op board of a building on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. I know I'm going to use this photo because there's so much good information in it, but it's not showing enough of the roof terrace. So I'm going to push it back in and I'm going to start to really roughly sketch out all of the elements that I want. The river, the Jersey Shore, the sky, uh, expanding the terrace, showing the building to the north. I'm going to want to hide the back of the parapet on the left side and uh, that's where I'm going to have my planting and I'm going to want a furniture group and maybe some planting behind that. Now again, none of this is designed, but this is just what would make a, a pleasant design and generic enough that if I were on that co-op board, I would be like, hey, this, is, this looks great. You're our architect. Thanks for thinking this through ahead of time. This is exactly what we're looking for. So step one is to go back to that photo, copy that photo and push it back just to the point where I think it's gonna make the roof terrace big enough. Now I'm gonna split that photo and copy it to reconstruct the northern part of the parapet, making sure all of that detail is at that proper scale. And now I need to add that building to the north, so I'm gonna reintroduce that second photo, place it in there approximately right, and then I'm just gonna clone it uh, symmetrically, uh, hoping nobody notices, and get it in there and do my best to blend the photos and make it look like a single uniform background photo that I can work over and uh, create the design over. So now the fun can begin over this very imperfect background photo and I'm going to start by laying in the grass and I'm actually going to make a second layer of grass so I can play I can make the layer behind it darker and give it some depth. Uh, and again, just starting in a very loose way. Now for the planter box itself, I select a new layer. I use the free hand select tool to create a selection in the shape of the planter. And then I just drop some color in. And now I have a foreground to all that grass. Then I can add shadows under the overhanging leaves of grass onto that planter box and it begins to make a very convincing uh, portrayal of the depth. Now I'm going to try and take a shortcut now because I want to show you that not every idea you have works and here I'm taking a photo that's already got a roof deck and I'm putting it into the perspective and it's giving me a head start visualizing everything that has to happen now. I can see the north building has to get a little wider these um, bamboo or whatever the planting is behind the sofa has to get a little more realistic. In the trees, I'm taking the initial blob that I made, I'm copying it, I'm making the layer that's lower darker, and then I'm going to use the Taralia brush in eraser mode to open up gaps in the uh, top layer of the light leaves. And this has the effect of creating quite a bit of depth in the tree and also allowing me to shape a more natural profile to the trees. I'm coming into the grass now to uh, darken some of the areas, give it a little more depth. And I want to put a middle ground in with these uh, little trees in the back, uh, maybe an overhanging tree uh, right up by the uh, front sofa. So all this stuff going on and in the midst of it all, I'm like, oh my God, I've got the perspective wrong. So I quickly construct some vanishing points, make sure they lead all the way out to the George Washington Bridge. I use that new perspective guide to begin to work the furniture in, testing the pieces that I have, figuring out how much I'm going to need to stretch and transform the individual pieces to fit the rendering. And then, to be honest, using only the pieces that are close uh, to save time. And I should point out that I'm using new furniture because the furniture from that photo I pasted in is too low in resolution. So with the furniture in, I can clean up this ground plane of the deck, 
put in a nice grid. And I remember that these roof terraces always have a kind of a beautiful strip of artistic gravel going around the perimeter. So I make three layers of dots with a number four script brush, using it to make nice round stones in three different colors to give it some depth. Fix up the grass a little bit. Now I'm just pulling everything back into the actual perspective because I forgot to do that right from the start. Uh, including, you can see I've laid the uh, furniture cuts in. I've selected them and uh, now I'm tracing around them. I've got more interesting planting behind the sofa on the right. And uh, it's pretty much what I want. Or, you know, I don't want to put any more than, say, three hours into this drawing. So now we just finish out. I have the line drawing on top on its own layer, which means I can go back into the underlying layers, use the smudge tool or use the flat brush tool to even out the colors, model some of the cushions a little bit better with darks and lights. Uh, you can see here, I'm just cleaning up the edges. And finally, I get to the shadows. Now the shadows go quickly because as I'm gonna show you to create the shadows, you create a new layer. And I'm gonna make that layer go into multiply mode and I'll explain why later. But basically it's because whatever you color you pick for the shadow is gonna blend beautifully with what's already under there. And I like to have a kind of a blue violet for my shadows initially. I can always adjust them later, but I'll start with that. Now the trick to the shadows, here they are on their own layer. So I'm gonna select the freehand tool and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna draw what I imagine to be the profile of the grass as it uh, blocks the sun and, and causes the shadow to fall on this deck. And here it's going to get all the way to this point. And because the sun is coming down, it is going to cause this grass to do this. And then I'm going to finish out by just doing this. Okay. So I'm now going to fill that layer. It's in multiply mode. I'm going to fill that layer with that purple. And the purple is a little extreme. Let me just adjust that make it a little less crazy, um, but you get the point. And there is my grass casting its shadow onto that terrace on its own layer. And of course I can adjust that layer, the transparency. Uh, I can also put that layer up above if I want to and use the brush in eraser mode, the soft brush in eraser mode, and I do this quite a bit, to soften the upper part of the shadow, almost making kind of a glow as the shadow hits. And this is actually the way that shadows work in the real, in the real world. They're always darkest at the point of contrast with the sunlight, and then the bounce light tends to fill in the areas of the shadow that are back in uh, out of the light. So um, there's your shadow technique. Another great trick with shadows is to use them to increase the level of realism in the rest of the rendering. So for instance, this foreground tree would cast a shadow over this grass, but it wouldn't be so crude. So I can use the uh, fine hair brush in eraser mode to come back into the shadow and make it look like individual strands of grass are standing out against the darkness. And of course, tree shadows falling on floors and streets, nothing could be more pleasing to the eye. The last thing to do with this rendering is to bring in some stock people. I uh, import them. I like to give them an outline like the rest of the furniture. So I use the number one ink pen and it just pulls everything into the same composition. To go deeper and really master Procreate, remember to check out the online courses I offer in the description below. To keep learning more life-changing Procreate techniques, check out this video here next, and I'll see you in the next lesson.